we've been dealing with pandemics uh, from the earliest recorded history. Thucydides writes about a pandemic in the history of the Peloponnesian War. So the last thing 2020 was, was unprecedented. In fact, it was very familiar to a historian, just surprising to most of us, because we don't really remember anything like this. It's been a while since this kind of pandemic struck. And the, and the Spanish flu um, epidemic, I mean, when I hear people talk about it, I would say the thing I hear most frequently is that the basic um, guidance that was being provided uh, by political leaders at that point stay away from people, wear a mask. I mean, these are the same sorts of guidance that we're giving people a hundred years later. That The technology around vaccines has improved, but not so much how to deal with the pandemic. It's actually quite remarkable when you read accounts of the 1918-19 pandemic, uh, which was called the Spanish influenza for no very good reason. It just happened that the Spanish papers were reporting well, were writing accurately. About it. Yeah. Uh, everybody else had censorship because they were involved in World War I. Uh, if you look at how the U.S. handled it, it's actually very strikingly familiar. There's extraordinary decentralization. Some cities uh, do uh, significant amounts of social distancing and uh, uh, what we would probably call lockdowns today, and others do a lot less and the outcomes therefore vary hugely from city to city and state to state. But you get familiar uh, reactions too. In San Francisco there was an anti-mask league which objected to mask wearing in the city as a violation of civil liberties. Throughout the 20th century, influenza posed a problem. It struck again in the 30s. It struck globally in 1957-58. And the, the story was pretty much the same uh, in the sense that there was a scramble to find a vaccine. They failed in 1918-19. Science still really hadn't got to the point that you could figure this out, certainly not rapidly. By 1957, they were able to put a vaccine together for the then Asian flu in just a matter of, of months. Uh, and it's interesting that in 57-58, they didn't do uh, much in the way of, uh, of social distancing and nothing in the way of lockdowns. In fact, they left schools and pretty much everything else open and just focused on the vaccine. Uh, it's worth adding one thing which I think was often lost in last year's discussions. 1918-19 uh, was a lot worse uh, than COVID-19. Even if you accept the very highest estimate for deaths, uh, and you may have seen some uh, pretty eye popping figures in The Economist recently. Yeah, well, well into the single millions, yeah. Well, COVID is still going to be an order of magnitude smaller in, in its impact than the Spanish influenza of 1918-19. And it's worth also adding that that killed young people and people in the prime of life. This is a very unusual pandemic in the, in the sense that it's ageist. And we really haven't had an ageist pandemic before. Nearly all the pandemics in history have been equal opportunity, killing the very young as much as the very old, and in 1918-19, killing people in the prime of life. 